to be too far out of here. And I had some. And I saw the beach. And I just feel it against my skin. And I know it feels like the whole beach is crying. That was one of my lighter pieces. <laughs> but um, basically, that was actually done, my voice, that's my voice, and I was under hypnosis at the time when I was doing a residency at the Institute of Neurology with a um, clinical hypnotist, David Oakley. Um, but I guess I just want to introduce that piece because my background is video, and I started off doing a lot of video and a lot of short films, and basically what they were trying to do was translate what's happening in here somehow out there. And in a lot of ways, they were much like this, sort of taking bits of imagery and sound and trying to induce an emotional feel from it. Sometimes I created work that when I was in um, heightened emotional states myself and using that sort of emotion to drive the editing of the piece. And I created a lot of these videos um, probably from about um, 1994 onwards and uh, then I started to travel with them and uh, go to the film festivals and actually see them being screened and then I started to think about well actually it's very different when you're in your you know dark studio and you're creating on this little computer and you're completely involved in this piece and the editing and it's like it's all surrounding you and you're just you know completely immersed in it and then you see it at a short film screen um, screening and it's like one after the other and it just doesn't really uh, correlate to the feelings that I felt that I had and the, the personal sort of feelings and the intimacy of it didn't correlate. Uh, so I thought we, I needed a bit of a shift and uh, 
One of my first thoughts was how could we actually use the emotions of the body to actually drive the work itself. And then another thought was how could we actually make a more intimate viewing, uh, video viewing environment. And um, this sort of led to um, installation work. And then it also led to, you know, wearable technology work. So, um, you know, video that sort of sat on your body that was part of um, speaking, speaking, I guess, another channel of communication. And one of these um, projects I worked on uh, was Medulla and Tomato with uh, 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 Tom Donaldson. And he, um, together we sort of produced this piece. And it was, it was a big piece. It was, a, you, know, you know, four or five years old, or maybe more, I don't know. And um, not well funded, I guess. But it was a big video piece. And it, it, um, it spoke... It had uh, videos of self-portraiture and it would monitor the emotional intonation, uh, the prosody, so not what you were saying but how you were saying it and it would use that information to drive video self-portraiture to the jewellery. So basically it was sort of speaking another, speaking what was unspoken, I guess. It would let people know if you were bored and all of a sudden you'd be you know, trying to act interested but it would be like yawning, um, you know, and, and you know, creating a sort of sense that, you know, it was very vulnerable to wear. But what it did do, which was probably the most interesting aspect um, socially, was change social dynamics. All of a sudden, everyone wanted to be, try and be interesting. Um, because you were revealing so much, they would then reveal their secrets as well. So interestingly, at the end of that project, <coughs> other than that I did it for different reasons, it um, socially and performatively, it became quite interesting to me. But I realised that if we were actually going to use... Um, you know, what I called then the emotions of the body to drive video, we needed to do it a little bit intelligently and meaningfully. So then I kept on searching for people who were doing interesting stuff and Hugo kept on coming up actually. And I was doing a residency in Japan at the time. And, um, and then one day I sort of thought, I thought, oh bugger it, I'm just gonna write to him and show him my work and see what he thinks. And this led to um, working with Hugo and a, um, a AHRC fellowship, wasn't it? AHRC Arts Council England one year fellowship and I was based at Artisan Resident at the Institute of Neurology where Hugo was at the time. And um, Hugo's work is, uh, you know, about emotion but also psychophysiology. So that for me, the brain-body connection was really, really interesting. So I was based there for a year and we did um, some projects together um, which was, you know, the project was which was just sort of sketches really, you know, how could we work with sweat, how could we work with heart rate, how could we work with all these different things. This is one of them. Um, this is working with sweat. Sweat is an indicator of um, not really an emotional response actually, just whether you're um, anxious or not. Then we started to work on it, which I think Hugo will get into a little bit late, later, some of um, the um, stimulus for, you know, some of Hugo's experiments and discussed stimulus and, um, oh, sorry. Before I talk about the next piece, uh, yeah, I might show the next piece. The piece was, oh. this one is actually, I started to work with David Oakley, a hypnotist, and I wanted to sort of think about more, how do you create an authentic emotional space? And what you, um, I mean, I don't know whether that's an interesting question anymore because what is an authentic emotional space, but how could you, you know, you get someone in front of the camera, they're sort of acting out an emotion, but how can you get a true emotion? And then it sort of led Hugo just to, to you know, talk to David and that was, um, 
using hypnosis. So David in um, induced me into emotional states and I would start reciting different uh, memories of about different emotional states throughout a lifetime. So one moment you're talking about an experience when you're five, and the next minute you know you're more present experience. And we created a database of videos, and this this is a quite a simple video that installation. As soon as you um, made any movement, I would wake up from hypnosis. But the longer that the audience was still was still was when I would also fall into hypnosis. And the longer that that were still, is the more intimate those stories um, would become.